If you look at one of the biggest cities in the world, like London, Seoul, and Sydney, there is something interesting in common with these cities. They all have untouched greenery that surrounds them. Imagine enjoying the best of both worlds, living amidst the convenience of a bustling metropolis while also experiencing the tranquility of being enveloped by verdant, lush greenery. If you are living in a capital city that has it, this is thanks to Greenbelts, a concept that is slowly but steadily gaining momentum around the world. It's a policy that seeks to preserve natural landscapes and stop unchecked urban development from encroaching on the environment and suburbs. Green belts are defined as areas of open land around urban areas, which are protected from development. They are the lungs of cities providing clean air and natural beauty to city residents. But on the other hand, green belts are one of the most financially charged policies ever, and maybe the reason why it's forcing people to live paycheck to paycheck. Let's break this down. One of the most iconic examples of a green belt is the one encircling London. Established in 1938, the London Green Belt covers an astounding 1.6 million acres, or roughly 13% of England's land area. That's equivalent to about 800,000 football fields. This vast expanse of greenery is home to over 20,000 species of plants and animals including some of the rarest and most endangered species in the country. The London Greenbelt is a vital refuge for wildlife. And by preserving and protecting these habitats, the Greenbelt not only supports biodiversity, but also contributes to the overall health of the environment, safeguarding the region's unique natural heritage. For example, in England, every single village has its own unique culture centuries old pubs and its own image. This green belt prevents merging all these unique suburbs into one city. Green belts come in all shapes and sizes from London's sprawling countryside to Tokyo's relatively modest 29,000 acres. Despite their differences, these spaces share common goals to protect the environment, preserve historical and cultural landmarks, and provide recreational opportunities for the public. Green belts are often a city's green lungs, improving air quality by absorbing pollutants and producing oxygen. In fact, one study found that green belts were responsible for removing 4,000 tons of pollutants per year in the UK alone. The green belt surrounding Seoul, South Korea spans approximately 63,000 acres. To put that into perspective, that's approximately 400 times the size of New York City's Central Park. This extensive park, with its lush forests and diverse ecosystems, acts as a carbon sink, absorbing and storing significant amounts of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Additionally, the green space provides a cooling effect, helping to counteract the urban heat island phenomenon in the densely populated city. The size, shape, design, and governance of green belts vary widely depending on local policies and contexts. For example, the German green belt, also known as the Death Grip, was originally a no-man's land between the two sides of the Berlin Wall. But after the reunification in 1990, it became a protected area for rare and endangered species, covering more than 1,400 kilometers along the former border. In Canada, the capital green belt of Ottawa covers more than 50,000 acres, featuring not only lush forests and wetlands, but also farms and historical sites. This expansive green belt contains over 150 kilometers of recreational trails equivalent to the distance between New York City and Philadelphia. Ottawa's green belt is a testament to the power of careful planning and sustainable development, showcasing how cities can balance urban growth and environmental preservation. For example, in China, not having green belts around its cities tremendously hurting its agriculture sector as cities are sprawling uncontrollably eating up agricultural land, which consequently trigger food shortages. But there is also a huge problem with these green belts, especially in the Western countries. Green belts are a double-edged sword. On one side, it's nice to have a natural habitat and preserve the culture and identity of villages, and on another side, the bowl which is the city, is literally boiling. The London Greenbelt, which spans 1.6 million acres, has been criticized for contributing to the city's housing crisis. By limiting land availability, the Greenbelt has driven up property prices, making it increasingly difficult for many people to find affordable housing in the city. In fact, between 1997 and 2016, London's average house prices increased by 301%, compared to 209% in the rest of England. 
This has led to the phenomenon known as leapfrog development, where new housing is built beyond the green belt, causing further urban sprawl and potentially undermining the green belt's original purpose. Another problem is urban sprawl and increased car dependency. The San Francisco Bay Area's urban growth boundary, UGB, which is similar to a green belt, has been blamed for increasing urban sprawl and car dependency in the region. Due to restrictions on development within the UGB, new housing and businesses are pushed to the periphery, leading to longer commutes and increased reliance on automobiles. This can result in greater greenhouse gas emissions and traffic congestion, countering some of the environmental benefits green belts are meant to provide. Additionally, green belts can sometimes inadvertently create inequitable access to green spaces, disproportionately benefiting those who live close to them. For example, a study on the Seoul Green Belt in South Korea found that people living within one kilometer of the Green Belt were 2.5 times more likely to use it for recreational purposes than those living more than three kilometers away. Another example is, in New York, apartments looking at Central Park are significantly higher value than the ones that aren't. It's sort of prestige. This disparity can exacerbate socioeconomic divisions within cities, as wealthier residents are often more likely to live near greenbelt areas. Also, greenbelts can lead to inefficient land use by preventing the development of land that could be more effectively utilized for housing or other urban needs. In some cases, greenbelts may include low-quality agricultural land or brownfield sites that could be better used for urban regeneration projects. The Cambridge Green Belt in the United Kingdom, for example, has been criticized for restricting the growth of the city and preventing the development of much needed housing, despite the presence of low grade agricultural land within the Green Belt. Green Belts can sometimes hinder the growth of local economies by limiting the availability of land for commercial and industrial development. For instance, businesses in the Greater Toronto Area have faced difficulties in expanding or finding suitable locations for new facilities due to the restrictions imposed by Ontario's Greenbelt Plan. This can hamper job creation and economic growth in regions with Greenbelts, as businesses may be forced to look elsewhere to accommodate their needs. However, it's essential to recognize that these drawbacks are not inherent to the concept of Greenbelts, but rather stem from poor planning and management. By incorporating innovative solutions such as mixed-use development, transit-oriented development, and adaptive reuse of existing structures, cities can strike a balance between protecting green belts and addressing housing and transportation needs. When managed effectively, green belts can become a shining example of sustainable urban development. Consider Canberra, Australia's capital city, which was deliberately designed with a green belt at its core. This garden city is renowned for its abundant green spaces, including the 54,000-acre Canberra Nature Park, which consists of 33 individual reserves. The story of Greenbelts is, in many ways, a microcosm of the broader challenges we face in the 21st century. How can we balance the needs of a rapidly growing global population, especially in the cities, with the imperative to protect nature that surrounds it? So the question for you, dear viewer, do you prefer lower rent prices on your apartment and abolishing the green belts or low rent prices, more apartment options, but no green belt surrounding the city? Let me know your answer in the comment section below. In the words of the celebrated American architect Frank Lloyd Wright, study nature, love nature, stay close to nature. It will never fail you. Green belts embody this ethos, providing a tangible connection to the natural world and the heart of our bustling capital cities. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, this episode is brought to you with help of these Patreon supporters and YouTube subscribers who joined. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching. More interesting videos are coming up. Please subscribe and hit the like button.